Gotta be honest with you, I'm a little bit deflated. Me too. Sky 13, what do you estimate these bases at, sir? Uh, I'm looking uh, probably around 1,000 feet, maybe 1,200. That's what it looks like to me, my computer o Yeah, this is going to be like the last hurrah, like, oh, it's been ruined. Unforecast weather. <laughs> the scourge of student pilots and CFIs everywhere. In truth, today was supposed to be a really good day for Seth. We had earmarked this day as his solo day. He'd been doing well. You've seen him on the channel, uh, working on his landings, get it, trying to get up to a point where I can get out of the plane. We're finally at that point and then for us to get to the airport and uh, not be able to do it is really disheartening, especially given the circumstances, which I'll get into very lightly in a second. On the way to the airport, the skies were absolutely clear, the winds were light, everything was looking good and favorable for a solo. Before I send students on solos, I like to fly with them for a few times in the traffic pattern to iron out some kinks. This, while it's not a direct reason that I do it, it's a good thing that I do that so I can kind of gauge the situation as far as the weather's concerned, because the clouds weren't forecast, they uh, like they, they turned out to be if I'd sent him up solo without testing it out he could have been in some trouble so that's just the way it works it was supposed to be a last hurrah for Seth and I uh, I'm unfortunately not going to be able to continue Seth's training oh for f I was hoping for the last session with me and Seth that I would be able to get him through his uh, first solo but it didn't turn out to be but enough of the sentimental bullshit. We're gonna make this last video with Seth a good one. In the previous video with Seth, I sat here and I reviewed his performance on landings and I thought it'd be a good idea to do it again. But before we get into it, this video is sponsored by my good friends at Surfshark. And it's my favorite VPN for three different reasons. One, it keeps me protected. Two, it gives me access to region lock content that I usually don't get to see. And three, it's absolutely affordable because we all know that CFI's main source of nutrients is ramen noodles. The internet is stocked full of hackers, fishers and Embry Riddle students letting you know that they got their student pilot certificate in the mail. Block them all with Surfshark. The security features on Surfshark keep you safe while you're surfing online. The clean web feature blocks ads, trackers and malware allowing you to surf the web safely. If you're on the move like most pilots are, you can keep yourself entertained by accessing content that may be region locked. Surfshark has more than 3,200 servers in 65 countries that you can switch to, which makes your system think that you're in a different location and you can access pretty much whatever content you like. It's as simple as opening Surfshark, connecting to the server, refreshing the page, and just like that, you get access to content that you don't usually get. And the best part is, even though it's already affordable, I've got a discount code for you. Riddle Kids Rejoice, that $30,000 you spent on your PPL, that Surfshark's here to cushion the blow. Click the link in the description or in the pinned comment and use my discount code LUDIX to get 83% off Surfshark plus three extra months absolutely free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring the video and let's get into it. All right, so what I'm looking for is for me to stay absolutely nothing. I know. Smooth, center line. If there's a crosswind, deal with it. One thing I will say is all oh, this shit coming in here. Yeah, I know. Not too pleased about that. Yeah, I know. But we'll, we'll see. This will be interesting. It's, it's just incredible though, because the whole time it's been nice, and then as soon as we get out to the runway, like. Yep. Or three two zero four two, make left coast track runway seven off seven, clear for takeoff. Clear for track, take off, runway seven off of seven, left coast traffic, zero for two. Center line, seven, seven, full power. Meters are in the green. Air speed's alive. And rotate. Welcome to the sky. Woo! Well, I'll tell you what, man, we'll make this crosswind practice then Central because... Central runway 7 at Alpha 7, It's not going to last. Yeah, I mean, it's just solo-wise, I can't. Yeah, I know. I can't I do know. that. No, 3 2 0 4 you can turn base, more 7, clear, touch and go. One more departure, departure, I'll be a scock. 
Uh, clear touch of go, turning base now, 042. So as we turn onto base on this first one, you, like this camera isn't doing it justice. Like the, the clouds rolled in from the south. Just high enough to stay in the traffic pattern for with me in the plane, but of course, solo students on your endorsement you have solo limitations one of the limitations that i give is a minimum ceiling of 3,000 feet the reason i do that is let's say i sent seth solo in the traffic pattern here and then this exact situation happened where clouds started to roll in and then all of a sudden it covers the airport and you can't get down then seth's got to go somewhere else he's got to divert to a different airport which obviously you train for but if I send him with, a, with like a 1,200 foot ceiling, let's say, and he's scud running from one airport to the other, I'm putting him at huge risk by allowing him to do that. You know, trying to set him up for success. So as we're coming in here, you can see he's playing with the uh, the slip uh, method for the crosswind controls. There's a crosswind from that right side. So he's playing with it, and we have worked on it. Uh, obviously, two different methods, the crab or the slip method, and he's using the slip method now. So you can see he put the right wheel down first, which was good, uh, and then the right main down, then the left main, then the nose, which is good, but it was way off center line, so he could have done better with those crosswind controls. And this is another reason that I like to go up and, and practice before they go solo, because it irons out the kinks. Usually, I've found in my experience with students that the first landing that they do of the day is usually the worst one. So I like to go up and, and make sure that they, they iron out the kinks before they go, so it's, it's good stuff. But yeah, it's, it's, it's encouraging to see him using those crosswind controls a lot better, because it's something that we, we had worked on for a while. All right, rotate. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right, so I felt a little more comfortable with that uh, dip in the wing. And it was good up until the last few se second or two. See what we get this time. Yeah, like <clears throat> you, you seemed a lot more comfortable with the slip in it in. Yeah, I, I just I needed to, to traffic on a one you know, have more rudder than I thought I did. Right. Uh, right. When I've tried to do it before, I go to dip, yeah, look, and I'm not adding too much rudder, right. so obviously it's just gonna go away. For yeah. Me, so. Yep. No, three two zero four two extend downwind on hard base. Zero four two extending downwind. You'll call the base. As is tradition here. Uh, as is tradition. But I'll be honest with you, I'm a, I'm a little bit deflated. Me too. Um, I mean, I know a lot of it depends. Um, as far as like the rest of the days in this week, uh, some of it's going to depend on airplane availability in case we wanted to try and get a last minute thing in. Yeah, but, uh, this is, uh, this is the only day I can do. Damn. Okay. Yeah. This was like going to be the. Cherokee what? 32042, you're looking for that diamond about your, uh, we'll call it your 11 o'clock now in the base leg at 900. I see that traffic. Cherokee 042, you're number three now. Follow the diamond and runner seven, clear touch and go. Yeah, this is going to be like the last hurrah, like. Oh, it's been ruined. Good morning, Murph. Good morning. Is that Ludix? <laughs> yes, sir. And Tower Sky 13, we're going to continue on down southbound. On I-4, and uh, we'll, we'll request to go south uh, across your parallel, your runway there for one seven. All right, coming in for the second landing. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of crab at the moment. His nose is way off to the right of the, uh, the center line, and he's going to start now to transition into that slip. Now you can see he's still at uh, what 400 feet here. I like to start the slip early so you can kind of get a feel and kind of play with it and, and see what you need all the way down to touchdown. Sometimes students struggle to understand how much they need to put in. So if they get it, you know, set up a while out, they're going to have a, a more chance of success. Sky 13, what do you estimate these bases at, sir? Uh, I'm looking uh, probably around 1,000 feet, maybe 1,200. That's what it looks like to me, my computer row. A little bit off to the left, but he's got it back. Well done, brother. Oh man, that felt good. Well done. Brilliant job. Brilliant job. Absolutely brilliant job. Yeah, see, he fixed what he didn't do right on the first one because the first one was way off center line. He fixed it. He got the plane over to the center line on this one, maintained the center line, and also with the crosswind controls, right main, left main, and then nose gear. You know, as much as it pains me not to see my boy solo, it gives me great delight to see him put into practice what we've been working on. For me to be able to sit there and not say anything about it because I didn't give him any instruction though, that was all him. It's a delight to see. Wow. That's the best crosswind landing you've ever done. I know. And uh, the death grip's back, but <laughs> <laughs> The York's coming off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
But yeah, that felt uh, that felt real good. Absolutely. Wow. I got the right down wheel, wheel down first. Yeah. So we're gonna make this a full stop. Let's make it a full stop, man. Okay. The the plan has been ruined. Uh, like I said, I wanted to make this the last hurrah. I wanted to experience that success with you, but. Oh my God, yes. But at least you you did a beautiful crosswind landing, the best one you've done. So we'll take that as a positive. Yeah. But we decided to make this the last one. You can see in that that the, the clouds have lowered even more. And uh, it was getting to the point where we were thinking that, like, okay, we need to get this thing down. So Murph was on the tower at this point, and Murph, being the legend that Murph is, did this. Exact tower, Cherokee 32042. This is going to be a full stop for us. Cherokee 042, wind 190 at 7. Would you like 1 3? Yeah, let's do 1 3. Uh, yes, we'll take 1 3. Cherokee 042, you're set up for the left base, running one tree and clear to land. Runway 13, clear to land, 042. Perfect. All right, sweet. 13, do it. You've got to love Murph. I've got to get him back on the channel at some point. But the so reason that I decided to jump on this idea of using 13 is first of all, we'd never used 13 before. Seth has never landed on 13. It's slightly narrower and shorter runway. We were coming in on a downwind for seven, and then all of a sudden, the plan has now changed to a left base for runway 13. As a pilot, you've got to adjust on the fly, right? Uh, and I wanted to see that Seth was able to, to kind of adjust with a, a change that he didn't expect. Thing is, when a student's with a flight instructor, you've got a safety net there. You know, you've got that person next to you that is going to jump in if something's not quite right. If you're on your own and you get told, okay, do such and such, and it's something that you've not done before, you're going to be flustered. And that's when mistakes can happen and that can lead to accidents. And I'm not about to let accidents happen. So we jump on stuff like this to, to see how uh, the student does. Mic trolls. Your controls. Mic trolls. So the taxi back in was a little bit subdued. Given the weather reports, the expectations are so low. Uh, and then we get there and we get up in the traffic pattern and we see that it's not going to happen. So it's a little bit deflating. Having said that, the first landing uh, off center line, but the crosswind controls were, were there. Second landing was crosswind controls. He was all over it and bang on the center line. Beautiful landing. Good touchdown. Right main, left main. Uh, nose gear. And then the third one, he adjusted on the fly to land on a runway that he's not landed on before, a procedure he's not done at executive before. With no help from me, with no input, I don't know if you saw that there's been no instruction from me in this flight. He was doing it on his own, he was just adjusting on his own. So that's the point that I want people to get to and what and what you need to get to as a student pilot for the instructor to get out. You're making decisions, just like a, a pilot in command. He was coaching himself through it. And again, it's deflating because this is so low worthy performance. It is a shame, but safety is safety and risk mitigation being what it is, I just couldn't afford to uh, take the risk and send him up solo. I suppose thanks to Seth for choosing me uh, as his CFI for this long. His journey is not going to stop. He's going to continue his training and he's going to go very far in aviation. He's very, very good, very, very competent, always studying. He's going to be absolutely fine. So thank you to Seth. He actually got me uh, the picture here, the painting of the two dogs. That's a, a joke that we had on the channel, so I'll always remember him with that. If that wasn't there, that would be up there, but that's there for now. If you want to talk about that in another video, let me know. But yeah, thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the video. Thank you to Seth for allowing me to document his journey up to this point. Thank you to you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave the video a like. Subscribe to Ludix Aviation if you haven't already, and see you on the next one.